Well, welcome back to the English broadcast of the LPL Week 10, Day 6, the very last day, and we have gone the distance. Nine games today, and our third game in this matchup between BLG and EDG. We've gone all the way, and Frosty, you've been here since the start of the day. How are you feeling? I've been here since 11 <laughs> <laughs> it's and been a long day. Frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. If we're going to end the LPL Spring 2018, heading into a very stacked playoff gauntlet, it had to go the distance. It had to go to nine games. What are we, 316? Yes, and counting uh, <laughs> before the end of the split. And we have playoffs to go, guys. This is only the regular season. But for now, though, we have to finish our, our paperwork. We need to cross those T's and dot those I's because BLG and EDG are going to go head to head once more. Our final game, our final match of the entire spring split. And reminder, BLG are playing for a chance to move up to the quarterfinals and get themselves another bye. If they beat EDG here, they can take second place in the West Standards over Snake and put themselves on the WE RNG Invictus Gaming side of the bracket. Yeah, Snake are the uh, biggest Edward Gaming fans right now. They are really hoping for a win. Try and secure that second spot because BLG because they'll even up on uh, series wins and because they win on wins and losses their total over the split, they will take that seed from Snake. So, BLG, a lot on the line for them. We'll see if they can make it happen in game three because game two was nothing like the first. <laughs> yeah, I had a Darius pick. We went a little bit sideways. That said, there was a lot of top lane bans. I believe uh, six top lane champions denied before AJ would get the opportunity to look for a pick and that man is finally smiling. He was not looking so... Uh, so happy earlier on, but it seems like Clear Love's smile has returned. Well, there was not a lot to be happy about in the first game, honestly. The uh, early game was good for about five minutes and then it all went wrong. But the second game, though, the macro was superb coming out from EDG. They were managed to just run uh, BLG around the map, honestly. They didn't really have a chance to come back into the game. So that's what we wanted to see from EDG. The veteran shot calling uh, clearly have come back into the team and reshape their identity once more. And that's what we got to see in the last game. And of course, the question will be, is Clear Love just coming back as the last hurrah? Again, the game doesn't mean anything for EDG. Will they return? turn to Haro come the playoff push. And unfortunately, it's going to be a long time before we have that answer because EDG are semi, uh, sitting up in a semi-finals buy. It'll be a long time until we get to see that one. But this is clearly coming in right at the very end of the season. The hero returns. Will it be the 2-1? and one? We'll see. And it all starts with this champion select as we get into this one. We saw the adaptation coming in from game one to game two for EDG. They don't really need to change too much up because the iBoy coming into the rust that was all they really needed. BRG will take away the Olaf and the Alistair here, targeting that bottom lane once more with the Morgana ban. And EDG will remove Swain, Gangplank, maybe other, another top lane ban. We'll see. And it's exactly the same bans that we've had all series long. The only adaptation being the Orn ban for game number two and game number three. And this should be a Zaya priority pick if uh, we're going to repeat history. <laughs> it will indeed. Wait, wait, wait. EDG. I got this. Zaya. Uh -huh. Sejuani Kench. Okay. And then it's going to be Rakan Jungler. Right. And then it's going to be more top lane bans. Mm -hmm. I predict Skana. Flex pick for top lane out of secondary ban phase. Okay. And then Garen. All right. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. I'm committing. Here's the Tam Kench. And here's the Jungler. We're, we're two for two. Okay. Back up to BLG, this should be the Rakan you were saying. It's going to be a Rakan and jungle pick, uh -huh. unless they want to try to grab an early priority Rise here. Should be either Rakan, Rise, or Rakan, jungler of choice. Last time it was a Skarner. This I would prefer something a bit... This just in, Fruskier and writes the script. <laughs> Don't make it so obvious. Oh! oh! Wait, no, this could be a mid laner, but it's not Rise. And it's not a jungle. Oh, I'm so ah, excited. Okay, we've changed history. There we go. <laughs> Sion gets locked in here for BLG, and it is a flex, as you said, between Amazing J and Mol here. But we 100% expect this to go up to AJ. Uh, not that Mol couldn't play the Sion, but this definitely fits more in AJ's type of style and responsibility to the team. So finally, we have some, uh, some variety to our draft. And that's the AD carry once again from EDG. So at least on EDG's side, Everything is going according Still to Still going plan. to the script. Yes, we haven't exactly. gone off the road yet. Um, they're looking at BLG and it's like, hang on, this this isn't in the paper. This is, what are you doing? But this does mean that instead of banning top laners, that they could actually choose to ban away mid laners. Again, my assumption is that it's AJ Scion pick. He's more of the tank player uh, for the team. He's always had a tank identity, even though some of his signature champions are the Darius and the Garen. 
and said they're going to squeeze Jungle Pool. Well, indeed, they'll take away the Rex Sign, what we saw in Garner. game one. Um, yeah, I would assume so, right? And that would actually force Chieftain on something we haven't seen before. Very strange, though. He still has, you know, big champion like Jarvan, which is the LPL staple. I feel like there's actually a, a like a bar test where if you don't play Jarvan, you're not allowed in this league. <laughs> yeah, you're not an LPL jungler. He must Go be elsewhere. this Jarvan to ride this ride. <laughs> That's absolutely the case. Everyone plays Jarvan, regardless of the meta. Uh, Camille will be the uh, ban away here towards Ray again targeting his carry picks. If it's the same as the last couple games, maybe they'll also hit Fiora off of this one. There's the Skarna ban you were just talking about towards Chieftain. So what's he going to grab? I think it should be the Jarvan. I would love to see Chieftain have a uh, heavy gank pressure jungler like that. Especially think it can be quite devastating against someone like a Jin. Lock him down, there's no real escape. We have to just jump on top of his face and completely destroy him. EG back over to them. They are looking for a mid laner and a top laner. The top side of the map has not been resolved just yet. And indeed, it might just be another tank coming in here for Ray. We saw the Cho'Gath in game one, and it will be the same in game three. This is so bizarre. You know, normally in the LPL, we see the Gnar pick into the Scion, because usually if Scion goes into a tank versus tank matchup, he just, you know, straight up wins, because he has the better pushing power, yep. he can't move him out of the lane, and then he brings a massive long-range engage ultimate. It's exactly what uh, Clement was saying in game number one, the difference between Orn and Cho'Gath in terms of what your tank is doing for you in these 5v5s. So I understand that Ray is a very strong Cho'Gath player, but I feel like he's crippling himself in lane. We're just going to have an immovable object in the form of Scion meet another immovable object in the form of Trogaf. So it's going to be a bit of a wet noodle fight in top They're lane, just unfortunately. It's ping pong up there with it the is. creep wave. It is. Uh, no Jarvan pickup, though. It is Karzix for Chieftain. Actually, decides to go that route in this game. So trying to put on his big carry pants. So see if he can get BLG across the line into number six. And that makes a uh, lot more sense now that we've seen the Karzix pick in tandem with the Galio. Blitz into clear love. Bring your friends. Yep, send in the bug and the follow up of the giant Colossus. Meet my little friend, Galio. EDG back over to them, looking for their mid lane pickup. So Leah is still on the board if Scout would like it. He's hovering currently over the Azir. That Scout has definitely become synonymous with over this last split, but we'll see what he decides to go for in the end. He needs something to compete with the wave clear, and it looks like it will be the Azir. It's one of his most played champions. Again, Clement and I are very vocal. We don't like Scout on Azir. He tends to do better with champions that have um, more displacement abilities, yeah. Yep. Azir has the uh, the swoop and scoop. <laughs> yep. So what do swoop de doop? The swoop de doop. That's what we call it, the swoop de doop. Uh, but Scout tends to have this mentality that he must make big, you know, game altering plays with the swoop de doop. He can't just play it defensively. And sometimes the best course of action is just to play a fight out slow. But Scout, he's got he's got one speed and it's breakneck. It is. I would like to see him just come out with the uh, swoop and maybe some dupe, but maybe not together. Uh, but he always just combines the two and we see him run face first into danger and then he dies. But EDG, we'll see if they can make it happen in game three. This is a big one for both teams. Really just, uh, it's, a, it's a grudge match, it's a pride match for EDG. No matter what are on the table in terms of stakes, they will always play up to the occasion against BLG. Little brother against big brother. And it's 1-1, one, one, one apiece. And Clearlove is even back for the occasion. And 500 strong in the Shanghai Arena to watch this man on your screen and Watch him return to the LPL with some form and grace. Our second game was exactly what we wanted to see from Clearlove and EDG in terms of adapting towards him. BLG, though, definitely a fall from grace off of their first game. And if they lose here, this will also be their win streak upset. They have got a uh, four series win streak heading into today. If BLG win here, it would be a pivotal moment in Chieftain's career. I have no doubt that he will go on to have a very healthy career on the LPL. We spoke earlier on in the day about such the uh, the incredible injection of new young talent into the league. And can you imagine you take down Clear Love on his return to the LPL in a best of three oh, yeah. right before playoffs? Huge momentum swing. Yeah, you're going to be telling the grandchildren about that one for sure. We get to see the compositions one more time before we head into game here. Get the Azir in the mid lane. Got the Galio facing it down as well from BLG. And this is it, our final game of the season. The final game of the split, and this one is for all the marbles. It's a bit uncoordinated there, but uh, we got there in the end. It sounds like descent in the ranks. Yeah, <laughs> Just like some yeah. harmony afterwards. Did we go? That's a sub-faction of the, uh, the BLG supporters e right there. Our son. 
And then someone else comes in with the E R San. Jaya. See, we can do it on the desk. Mako, he's in the river right now. Let's see if they find that uh, three line <laughs> invade. The classic play by play hard advance. And Mako in the river. Yeah. <laughs> you just you pick a thing on the screen and then you say what's happening. I have eyes. <laughs> Let me tell you what my special eyes see. I see a, a catfish swimming in the river. Um, his road though is stepping up. And also Jinja is going to join him. I wonder if they'll look for a level one play here onto Iboy and Mako. Uh, we have seen Ming do that on the Rakan. He took very clever pathing using his W early to get around behind his opponent. Not doing it this time around, just trying to figure out where Clear Love is starting in the map. And both junglers will be starting topside, and both teams have very clear information about that because they see that Iboy and Mako get early access to bot lane, and Ray is just now lumbering towards top. Yeah, they know exactly what's happening as both the top lanes will see each other. Uh, Scott's getting a lot harassed down onto the mid lane, as expected of a range versus Galio matchup here. He's actually gone for the Dark Seal to start off the game. Uh, meanwhile, in the top lane, we get to see Scion's runes. We'll be going for that Inspiration first, followed by Resolve second, seeing that Bone Plating is basically a must-have for many top lanes right now. Also taking the Tonic in uh, Inspiration. And I also just like the Inspiration tree in general for AJ, because again, his identity, his ammo, is about access to those summoner spells, utilizing Tifui uh, as often as is available, and the unsealed spellbook just allows that so much, or excuse me, the inspiration yeah. tree just allows him more tools like that. The versatility, and yeah. hey, well, he, he could go for the spellbook if he wanted to, but this time it's Glacial Augment. In the bottom lane, however, uh, Iboy and Maker will get the initial push into tower, and Jinjo will have the last one hit this one under tower. Uh, both AD carries have gone for fleet footwork here as well. Uh, we're seeing a lot of aftershocks as well in the form of uh, Mole in the mid lane and Clilip in the jungle. Chieftain. Going through his pathing right now, he's going to be finding himself on the bottom side of the map. Uh, the crap has already been taken though by Clearlov. There is no contest in the river at the very least. Clearlov has always been a jungler that prioritizes uh, scuttle crab control. Again, the identity of EDG has always been that their laners are the primary carries, and Clearlov just acts as the spine that kind of holds them up and protects them. So his job isn't so much as heavy ganking and uh, pressure, it's just making safety for these guys. This is scary for Mo, but he turns around with the Justice Punch and the Colossal Smash is big. Here comes Chieftain onto Scout. A flash follow through as well, and the Void Spike. Not quite enough to finish off the Emperor of the Sands. Looking for the swoop de doop he always he goes for it. He can't help himself. And the thing is, is he was lured into a false sense of security by the early vision placed bottom side. He thought, the jungle's not on the bottom side. I'm clear here. I can go in and I can make this pick. But barely gets out with his life. Yeah, clearly not. Uh, clearly will rock up to mid lane though, help out with this uh, mini wave push for Scout. Make sure he's not going to be aggressed on by Chieftain coming in for a return gank. He's actually sitting on a ward right now as well. So. For sure, Clearlove will like to control the vision. And it, hey, Lanes, if you die, it's, it's literally on you because you should be able to see everything coming. Uh, and Scout was just in it a little too deep. However, doesn't end up paying for it. Mako and Clearlove must be the most well-paid babysitters <laughs> in the history of the world. For sure. It's every single game. However, yeah, the children that they're, they're taking care of, they're, they're quite good at what they do, honestly. But it's just, it's little things that also then denies for them. And it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, take this instance. What if Chieftain had decided to steal the Krog camp away? Because he sees that Clearlove has to escort Scout back to safety, which mm -hmm. means his back is delayed. I mean, you could maybe assume that because the back was delayed from Clearlove that he would walk to Krugs, but you could have, you know, cheapened away or, or scraped away some experience, some camps, some goals. And those are the things that Mako and Clearlove often give up to cover for the aggression of their laners. And Chieftain's actually trying to match Clearlove in what he's doing here in the early game. And it's pretty much been the case in the last uh, couple games in this series. Clearlove walked to the top lane. This is now going to be seen out by Amazing J. He doesn't have the ultimate, though, does have the flash. And he's already very low at critical HP. He jumps away, but there is the stun. Alpha and Clearlove, picture perfect. Rupture doesn't connect, but the rest of the CC does. Ray's going low, and here comes Kha'Zix. Oh, this is scary. Chieftain wants to follow up on this. He doesn't have flash. Good the flash, flash away from Ray knows the jungler won't be able to chase him. And so far now, Clearlove has two of his lanes in a very happy spot. Actually, I'm going to retract. I think Scout's actually in a dangerous spot because he was forced to use his flash, whereas Mole still has his available. So at least one of his lanes in a healthy spot. That was a nice trade there from Mole as well. Of course, he will take uh, damage as he walks back to his tower now. And Scout, he's always hungry for a kill. Mole walking back towards him. Maybe you can just fake him out that my jungle is here. And again, it forces Clearlove to walk into the mid lane because he expects that Kha'Zix is sprinting towards this golden chicken. He's like, KFC tonight, boys. Yeah, don't make that happen. Clearlove is constantly playing babysitter in the mid lane. And there we go, clears out the ward. His raptor camp is up. He could be farming raptors. If that was SOFM, if, F if uh, Scout's jungler was SOFM, he would have died. Now, but Clearlove, maybe able to follow up in the mid lane. 
We get the slowdown. Clilov dragged into the tower from that taunt. And that will finally send more back to base. But yeah, Clilov would really like level 6. He will be able to get that one shortly if he can just get those damn raptors. In fact, they're going to hang around and uh, I believe shove the wave into the tower because Mole is trying to be cheeky and, and hang around, see what he can scrape away. Yeah, only with the Winds of War. And because Scout is backing away on his own back, Mole will get another minion wave as well. So. Uh, nice. Chieftain does have a window here. He knows that Clearlove has exited towards the top side of the map again. He was spending so much time babysitting Scout in the mid lane that he now has an access gank towards bottom side. Spotted by the ward, but let's see. So he has to go right now and Mako says, come with me, eye boy. We'll get to safety, I promise. Doesn't use the flash right here. No summoners, no resources burnt by EDG. And this is why EDG will prioritize the Tom Kench pick. It all makes sense. It's because... They're laners, they have to be aggressive, they have strong confidence in them in iBoy and Scout, and they just need the picks. The Sejuani uh, defensive security style, the Tom Kench just defensive positioning to allow EDG to play to the strengths. Nullify that early game again from Chiefs and can't get this Karzik rolling. Now he's going to go to the top side as the blue of has just spawned, but not making the impact he really wants to have in these lanes just yet. Our bot lane's relatively even in terms of farm mid lane. A good deal is ahead because Scout has been aggressing on Mole and he's had Clear there to back him up. Though that has put Clear slightly behind. He has also picked level 6 up though and also has that kill. So he's not hurting too much, he just could be further ahead. But the fact that Chieftain's been run around right now, Clear has the ultimate advantage and they're going to use this to brute force away the blue buff. We'll see if Chieftain gets a smite steal. Knock up onto Chieftain to follow through. Here's the defense from Mole though. Crashes down on top of Clear. Look, gets the Justice AJ. Punch and turns this one around. AJ, he has the ultimate. He's thinking about engaging, but this is risky if they go for it. It's a three versus three. And also very hard for Scion to navigate, utilizing the ultimate in uh, such small corridors inside the jungle. So it doesn't immediately pressure it. And instead, they're just able to walk back and have Chieftain grab this blue buff. Really needs it so he has access to his ultimate. Nice defense there from BLG. EDG knew if they hit the blue buff, that was going to initiate hostilities. BLG were going to attack them. So they back away off into their respective lanes and then take the easy objectives that are much safer for EDG to take here. So very nice for Chieftain to catch back up, though he is still not level 6. So Clearlove is a good ways ahead of him in terms of experience. But at this point, uh, Clearlove's not going to be picking up experience anytime soon, whereas Chieftain is actually going to be farming his camps, simply because he wants to pass off the blue buff, unless they try to grab this red. Because Galio is back and very low on health and mana. Yep, never mind. This has been spotted out by BLG. Rode is on his way up to spot out Clearlove. Teleport's almost up and available for Mole. BLG could try to stall this out and look for a counterplay with the TP from Galio. The best that Chieftain can hope for is a steal, and Rode slightly missing the timer there. He was like, well, if Clearlove comes out for the smite, this would be perfect, but it doesn't happen. So great invade by EDG, backed up by the lanes. Not the Raptors, too. I was trying to set up a, a nice silver lining for Chieftain. You know, while Clearlove still has the EXP advantage, he's not going to be farming. Chieftain could actually catch up with this next jungle rotation. Loses his red buff, loses his Raptors. Loses everything. Uh, luckily, he does still have Krugs alive and he'll be able to move towards his Merc Wolves. But yeah, in terms of experience, he is getting stomped out here. Then it's just really because Clearlove has these pushing lanes. You know, mid lane and to push up, beat out Mole. Clearlove can just walk into the jungle and he knows that BLG are not going to be able to outnumber EDG in his place. But finally, Chieftain has access to his ultimate, which means he's opened up so much more viable gank paths. So hopefully, uh, power can start shifting more towards BLG now that their jungler is ready to gank and has some kill pressure in these lanes. That's the hope. Uh, Scout will get himself the blue buff, move back towards the middle lane. Uh, he's only got the Sork Boots right now and two Doran's Rings, so I have to assume he's got quite a lot of gold to uh, go back on in the near future, but we'll continue clearing up this wave. Here's Mole and Chieftain with the patented Invade. We see these two together, hand in hand, walking towards the jungle, and Chieftain will get this Raptor Camp. And Ray doesn't want to give up the big wave, but he is conscientious that the jungle mid-duo from BLG had disappeared up towards the top side of the map. And it is always a uh, an option, especially with Scion, the ability to dive a tower in uh, tandem with the tankiness that Galio is also going to give you. I don't think that Cho'Gath's invincible up there. Not for now. He needs a, a full item, maybe a couple of full items, honestly, against BLG. His mole again walking to the top side of the map, just disappearing into Fog of War. Places down a ward. Road jumping over the wall, again gets a deep ward for himself as well. Was that actually a very deep control ward coming from EDG they to try and spot out Chieftain? Yeah, BLG effectively have so much line vision, just a straight line across EDG's jungle. So should have full information about where Clearlove is and how to play around this one. 
Lilith is on his way to the bottom lane, placed down his own control ward. The unfortunate thing is, uh, you know, with the information, you would say that, okay, if, if Chieftain sees that Clearly is ganking bottom, maybe he can gank top. But because it is also a Cho'Gath, and yeah, he's not invincible, but you have to bring so many members to try to break him, and it's still going to be risky. Uh, it kind of feels like the only option that BLG have is to gank bottom lane, which is exactly where EDG also wants to play. EDG will get their first dragon of the game in the form of the Ocean Dragon. Next one will be Infernal, so it'd be nice if EDG can maintain control over this dragon pit. Actually pushing into the bush right now. Rode really doesn't want them to clear his uh, ward out, and in fact they won't. Clear backs away Rode's and gets taunted up. Here comes Mole in from the mid lane as well. Lands the knock on and clear love. Saved by Mako. Flashes over the wall. The 1 for 2 special. Here comes iBoy back in towards the tower, and that's teleport cancelled. Yeah, as I was saying, BLG want to play around the bot lane, and why I thought that, that was unfortunate for them is because that's usually where EDG thrive. But BLG were trying to be very proactive, beat EDG to the punch, almost came to fruition there, but a cancelled teleport, and it feels like things should calm down, especially with the dragon not being around. Should. In Should. theory, because Clearlove is in the bottom lane. He's out of health, but he's not out of resources. He has he's his ultimate in. ready to go. Road backs off towards Jin Zhao, and Clearlove just says, hello, I'm here. I could have all to do if I wanted to, but I'm going to go back to base. And the confidence to make the play is, of course, because the Galley ultimate was used in the river, wouldn't be up and available, so they thought that they could push their luck. But again, good read from BLG, deny the play. Everyone's just going to calm down take a breather and get their backs. We've had a lot of attempts at ganks in this game, a lot of attempts at trying to get a skirmish going, and it's actually been both teams with nice reads being able to stop the other from making it happen. So while there's only one kill on the board, there's been many more attempts that we actually haven't seen come to fruition. Uh, Clearlove knows this is being taken by uh, Chieftain because he can see it on his minimap. So he's going to shove him off and say thank you for the leash. I will take this red buff now. Chieftain, go back to your own jungle. Finally, BLG's vision line has started to time out. So, like you said, both junglers, both teams have very clear reads, and it feels like this game has just been really a tug of war, just back and forth. Eventually, though, the tension will cause something to break, and that's going to be a big team fight, a big skirmish, and you know it's going to happen. It's BLG versus EDG. It's going to be a team fight. It's, it's just about when it happens. Stack into the bot lane. It'll probably happen. I'm going to assume within the next three to five minutes. Um, so the big cooldown that you're looking at is, of course, going to be Mole's ultimate, handing off this blue buff, probably two rotations of mid lane towers, or excuse me, mid lane minions, and then they're just going to start throwing everything that they can bottom, which means that the vision control that Clearly is securing right now is super crucial because that's to spot out Galio to give EDG all the information that they need to know to hit first on this bot lane play. All the more important, and plus, uh, BLG won't have any nice teleport wards to go onto as well. With this is all being taken away by B uh, by EDG, there's triple control wards. Actually, make that four control wards in the bottom side of the map for them. So, BLG, if they're going to teleport, they'll have to go front to back instead of getting a nice flank off for themselves. And you know, that's how amazing Jay was getting these great initiates in game one was because he always had those flank wards set up. This time, not going to be the case. Yeah, Ray has access to his TP, whereas uh, there's a window where AJ does not. But BLG have a full read on this. They know that. Clear love feels that the team is very strong. They have the numbers advantage on bot side of the map. So he plays his vision, and Chieftain's just looking for the steal. Whoa. Nah, not going to happen today, kiddo. EDG find themselves another red buff goes over to Scout right there. The last hit from that Sand Soldier. And Rose and Jindal also heading up as well. So it's a sad it's a sad day for Chieftain. He's not managed to get his hands on a red buff in this game. EDG constantly counter-jungling him and just moving as a group. EDG with his control over the bot side is continuing to pay dividends for themselves, as we see. Chieftain and Mole aggressed on. Here comes Scout in from the mid lane. Now you have permission to swoop to dupe my enemy, says Clear Love. Mole is going to get the taunt off onto Clear Love, but meanwhile, in the bottom lane, here's a teleport up. Flash away by Chieftain, and iBoy, he wants to get in range. Lines up the shot, finds the kill. And it may be more than that. He still has the curtain call available, and here comes Ray. The flying teleport out from Ray. Can he find that rupture onto a key target? Well, Mole's been slowed down by Clear Love, so he is dead to rights. Who is it going to go over to? Probably the Emperor of the Sands will try and donate this one over. The distant fadeaway shot from Iboy. Please! Please hit. EGG now grouping up into this bottom lane. Azir is actually on the flank, and that's actually the ring gauge from BLG. This is uh, this is dicey for sure. Scout over the wall flies into the fight, and Jin Zhao rooted by Iboy with a beautiful prediction. And now Rose. I hope, I hope you're good at dancing. I hope we can see the same because this time actually not the case. Takes two big crit shots to the face. But it's still a race. The minion wave, it's just now crashing. Can AJ at least get first tower for BLG? Oh no. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, 
Oh, just in time. I think Amazing Jay just didn't have the extra attack damage on that sign. He's just the tank at the end of the day. And EGG win the race. From bad to worse, so many kills, so many valuable summoners expended in the bot lane. We set it up. We said there is going to be a massive bot lane play. Oh, yeah. Who's going to hit first? And in stereotypical fashion, it's Edward Gaming. They are just so practiced in that move. It's really nice to see. In the top lane, though, Ray's going to catch uh, Amazing Jay on the recall. Not going to mean too much. However, uh, BLG are actually moving on to the Herald themselves in top side. So they should be able to pick this one up as a consolation prize for themselves. Yep. It doesn't even look like EDG are going to contest. Instead, you see the ping go to Wolf Camp and the fact that they need to hand over the blue buff to Scout. Ray knows it's happening, though. Yeah, he does. So eventually be taken down by uh, Chieftain, keeping it above 2,000 HP so he can get that final proc off on the eye. And then this time picks it up with no contest. So the most important thing about this point in the game is, of course, going to be those mid lanes. Um, usually teams are hyper dependent on the Rift Herald, at least in the LPL, in assisting with breaking the mid lane tower and also globally, simply because of the abundance of wave clear. Um, but however, with a Jin and a Sejuani, EDG aren't as... Uh, reliant, I guess, on having the Rift Herald to be able to shove down this structure, which is why they're not immediately moving Eyeboy towards the top side of the map to take top tower. They're here for mid tower, and they need the utility of the curtain call to do so. They want mid tower. They also want Infernal, which is about to spawn in just a couple seconds. And all the members of EDG are here in mid lane, ready to pivot to this objective that they need to. And it looks like Scout has already started this one up for himself. As clear turns the corner into the Dragon Pit. So EDG should be able to score themselves a very easy Dragon here. BLG, the question is, will they push in mid lane? Will they look for the engage? Probably shouldn't do either. They place down the Rift Heralds in mid lane. Want to get this charge this off, but I doubt it's going to be the tower. Really dangerous from BLG, though, because a flank would absolutely destroy them and would send so much momentum back into EDG's way. Like, Rode is playing with fire right now. He feels so confident because of his W and having cleanse available to him. Scout to the top lane would be the one to clear out this mini wave. He sweeps Amazing J into the tower, though he's not a squishy. So it's going to be a long chase if Scout wants this kill. Nice knock up there with the decimating smash, but the follow through is here. And we're just waiting on Shifting Sands of your Scout chasing down the bus. But see you later. He wanted to force the train. He's like, you are not walking out of this. You will use your ultimate. You will respect me. And also Flash was up for Amazing J as well. So uh, resources there for him to get out, but didn't really want to burn the ultimate in the end. Good stuff from Scout, sending him packing. And I will say that the biggest difference I'm seeing in this series from EDG and previous series we've seen in the split is how EDG are moving around the jungle. Obviously, it makes sense because Clayliff is playing the game, but there's so many options that EDG haven't been able to move towards because of the lack of synergy with Haro. If they made that bot lane gank happen with Haro, we literally saw what happened when he was on Sir Johnny. He walked into a Caitlyn trap and the play fizzled. And we've seen this with FPX as well. When you slot a veteran member like Cool, like Clearlove into a team, suddenly the communication is so much cleaner as another pick. And we can look for pick after pick. We know exactly where they're going to be. Oh, no. And Grump with the assist. Oh, stealth's up. And Mako has actually picked up a kill on cross map on towards Road. I thought we were about to see the assassin Grump come in. But of course, because Chieftain and AJ are cut off on the top side of the map, it means that EDG have free access towards that mid lane. And like I said, they wanted to park their ADC mid lane. Oh no, AJ's caught out. Uh, he's playing bodyguard to try and get his uh, top laner away. But now, to say it's my life for Chieftain. I guess I die here. This is going to be the long chase down the long escape as EDG are just moving him towards the jungle. Clear love over the wall. That's a nice bit of CC, but not long for this world. Amazing Jane will find glory in death. Ah, oh, he was so close to having his ultimate, but he did still that long enough that they were able hey. to push down the mid tower. So, you win some, you lose some. Chieftain got out, mid tower went down. And actually puts BLG ahead in terms of towers in this game, funny enough. I'll actually just look towards mid lane and see how Mako managed to get that kill onto Roach. I have a feeling it was with a Q. Ah. No? He just exploded he from Eyeboy's damage. Slap the tongue on him. Yeah, I'll be honest, if I'm time to catch there, I'm like, there's no way that the sort of attack kills him. Or I guess he just lost all his health to Eye Boys, so I'll take it. No problem. It was accelerate me towards my tank build anyway. Do you ever really trust the support, though, as like the slowest auto attack animation is completed and just secures the kill? Typically, no, uh, but this is Mako, so I'll give him a pass. Um, for solo queue supports, absolutely not. They're always looking to seal the kill. I mean, now he's got all of that gold. Look, he's already got his little shield completed. Hey, I try does. to say Aegis, but I always say it wrong, so I never want to say it. But you just said it. Is it Aegis or Aegis? I'm pretty sure it's Aegis, but it's the difference between Americans and British, so 
You can just say you're right, it's just a regional difference. Don't worry about it. Next thing I'm just going to start saying whilst. <laughs> whilst. Here comes the engage from BLG, slamming down on top of the time. Kenji doesn't get to use his great health whatsoever. Clear love, caught in the middle of all of this action, and Ray trying to turn this one around. There's the assassinate down onto Road. Iboy is dealing the damage as he walks up to the team, and Edu G are turning this one around. Amazing J still trapped in the fight, and Scout blows up the backline. Good night to Mole. And another kill over to EDG. That band backfired for BLG. Looked for the soup to dupe from Scout, and while he didn't get an amazing knockback, he at least covered the distance and was able to catch up to Road and Jin Zhao, fleeing for their lives. It's now the mid tower down and access to Baron. Clearly, already started it, but Chieftain is still alive. He is, but he is but a Kha'Zix to try and stop this one from happening. It would be a one-way trip if he wanted to try and find the steel here. And in fact, he will decide to head into the jungle, take away resources instead of trying to contest this one. And EDG get the Baron at 21 minutes. And suddenly this game has cracked wide open for EDG in a composition that scales wonderfully. And it all starts with Eyeboy here. So Ro, he turns around, he tries to do what Rakan does. It looks good initially because the Galio gets in, but then all of those big cooldowns have been expended on the tankiest member, and then EDG's damage really comes through. Forces the flash of the Jin Zhao, that could be punished in the very next team fight, and while he doesn't get the scoop, he does get the range to clean up the back half of the fight. And Conquering Sands demolished Jin Zhao and Mole. Mole dying there in the end, and EDG with nine kills and the Baron buff and an Infernal Dragon are running it down mid. And the important thing is, is that they're just going to have to give away probably the end hit because Jin Zhao doesn't have the flash available. It's really dangerous for Zaya to step up even with ultimate to try to wave clear here, especially now that uh, Scout has both flash and his own ult. Curtain call for the zone here for EDG and Rose and Jin Zhao. Gonna get Rude. some assistance from Chieftain. Yeah, interrupts Eyeboy there on the backside. But EDG, if they've cracked open the base, they got the objective they wanted. Mako took a lot of damage for that and has to go into great health as well. So won't find the regen. Meanwhile, on the front lines, Ray is getting taunted up and the re-engage out from Road. He sees the opportunity and Ray is low. Chieftain is corralling them into the team. But EDG say, okay, we'll raise. We'll go into the team and try and break apart Amazing J. Down goes the tank. There's Mole though, he's back from base, and there are a lot of low members on the side of EDG, but they simply can't approach. Oh, Azir with a flash forwards, give them the swoop and the dupe. Mole, the last one remaining, he's gonna fall. Five for zero, EDG. You cannot fight that, BLG. Your AD carry doesn't have flash. Just give it away and live to fight another day. With that, Big Brother strikes down, and BLG will remain in third place. Unreal. One single push allows EDG to go from outer mid all the way to the Nexus. And EDG say, little brother, nice try. But today, we will reign supreme. Don't even show the crowd. They don't even want to see it. <laughs> cut, the, cut the tape. Ah, uh, the great return. We thought at first it might be AJ's revenge. BLG managing to scrape away game number one in dominant fashion. But at the end of the day, it's just not his narrative. It's not his chapter. It's all about clear love, and he did get his redemption. I think off in the distance, yes, I can hear it. Snake are celebrating because they get their second spot uninterrupted by BLG. Will not get the win here today and secure their second place moving into playoffs. They're going to be very happy with that one, but no bad blood between the two teams. Just saying, my little tinfoil hat, kind of feel like Snake or Sweat. I hear you. I hear you. They are definitely on the what you would consider the side of death coming into playoffs, honestly. A lot of scary names down there but also a very scary name in Edward Gaming. We don't know if Clearlove will continue with the squad for their playoff run. They have a semi-final bye, which won't commence until I believe the 22nd of April. So Oof. about 10 days for them to sit and stew. Who will be the starting jungler? Clearlove has shown anything today. He definitely changes the team's vibe and how they move in the early game for sure. When it comes together, comes together very quickly. Great stuff out from Clearlove, leading the charge on a lot of these plays. But BLG, they move to the top side of the bracket, and they're honestly looking at this one. While they may be sad today not picking up the win against EDG, they look in their future, and it's like, actually, this is a very doable run. Exactly. They'll face uh, JD Gaming for their first opponent in the playoff run. Waiting for them in the quarterfinals is Rogue Warriors, but waiting for them in the semis on their side of the bracket will be Edward Gaming. So. Maybe they have better luck in a best of five versus a best of three. It's still a very long run 
towards Chengdu for BLG. Honestly, this feels like when you're playing an RPG and you see the final boss at the very start and you're like, okay, I'm clearly not meant to be able to beat him here, but the raid boss is right at the end of the corridor here for BLG. They just have to get through two teams to meet them. It'll be a long run, but it's definitely possible from the great things we've seen from BLG recently. And one of the fastest games we've had this split, 23 minutes, just a straight cliff. Straight up there, EDG dominating uh, BLG in the second and third games here. They're really just showing what EDG are made of when they're trying hard in a game to win. So nice to see from EDG heading into playoffs, regaining their form and solidifying really their, their place at the top of the Western Conference. So they, they definitely got it, but now I, I'm feeling better about EDG being up there. It's also the fact that they didn't showcase anything. You know, this was the exact same EDG uh, style and strategy that we've always seen. So they held their cards close to their chest for playoffs mm -hmm. and they may have some secret weapon waiting for them in the semis. Maybe. Hopefully it's not Darius. Uh, hopefully that's hopefully not the, it's the secret not weapon. Darius. Also for BLG as well. But that's something that maybe can work on 8.6, but not 8.5. Not Definitely not 8.5. Uh, unfortunate to see it come through, but at the same time, I feel like my curse of just seeing weird picks just completely get destroyed when I cast them is still ringing true. So we've got that going for us. I don't us. know. You got a Yorick. You got an Alawi. Yeah, got destroyed. They what, all got destroyed. What more could you want? It was it was really sad. Very, very sad. But for now, though, we are going to send it back to the Allen's desk to take a look at the series and close out the day. Thanks, guys. Go home, Pulse. Get some rest. Not you, Frost. You need to stick around because we've got another segment coming up after we wrap that final game. Before we close the Spring Split group stages, we're going to recap everything that's happened, <laughs> make some predictions before we go into playoffs. So this is now officially the EU LCS Finals waiting room. Spam your Poggers because Poggers is enabled. It's the waiting room. Stay here for a while. We've got some action. We've got some you know, cool replays. No, we only got one replay coming up. We're going to talk about the LPL for a little bit. We're going to recap what's happened so far. Send us into playoffs nice and easy. And it's going to be a nice fun chat between you, myself, as well as Indiana when she joins us on the desk later on. But let's recap that game, Clement, because as they said, it was super fast. It was super decisive for EDG. What the heck happened? Uh, well, basically, we saw the biggest collapse in LPL history, basically. 20 minutes on the mark, they go into a horrible team fight, lose the game, and they're off a cliff at 23. So very well played by BLG. That's, uh, it, it's actually hard to to do it that well. Uh, if you look at the compositions, of course, the big thing to note here is the Kha'Zix and Galio composition. They're looking for an early engage type of comp, and there's not a lot of late game power for any of these picks here. And I think the problem is that Clear Love did have Chieftain's number throughout this game. The Kha'Zix pick did not work whatsoever. Once he was able to snowball those early fights in the jungle, he took control of that jungle, and the Kha'Zix picks just was unfound in terms of the team fights. Very similar to game number two. Uh, Clinton was able to read Chieftain like a book, but let's take a look at that final team fight that decided the match for EDG because as we said, it was very one-sided. EDG had a game plan, executed it incredibly well. Oh yeah, so uh, actually BLG initiate this fight, they put everything onto the Tom Kench, they don't get any of the carries, and they're still looking for the front line. Now, to this point, Chieftain has actually done no damage to the enemy team, and BLG haven't even found a carry to really put anything on. They just went all in onto Tom Kench, all in onto Clear Love, and uh, Kha'Zix never found any footing in that team fight. I mean, Clear Love shut down Chieftain so hard that Rode did double the damage that Chieftain, <laughs> a Kha'Zix, in Game 3 did. He did 1.2k. <laughs> Rode was able to do 2.4k damage in that match. It's actually unbelievable how far he was shot behind. Oh yeah, this is the this is definitely the worst game that we've ever seen Chieftain play by far. Like Chieftain is usually a very good player. We we laud him for being that aggressive early jungler, but not this game. This this game he was just nowhere to be found, missing first, in action. First set was really good for Chieftain. However, the past two sets were not that great. And with that, now BLG, they will only be able to take third in the Western Conference and they don't get the extra buy moving into the quarterfinals. But EDG Scout, he picked up MVP for game number three. EDG, they brought back Clear Love, they bring back Eyeboy for games two and three, Scout steps up to the plate, EDG looking strong moving into playoffs. And he looks so much better when there are clear players like Clear Love to direct him around the map. He went into the top lane, got kills on Amazing J, got kills on Chieftain, and also in that mid lane team fight, he was crucial for finishing up the back line. The scoop from behind to finish the game and clear the way for Baron. And it was an easy pickup coming out from EDG in games two and three. They pick up the 2-1 victory. They were already secured first place in their conference, but they knocked BLG down one pay. For now, though, let's take a look at the standings at, of the LPL as we have concluded all the matches played here. Over 300 games played, Clement, and this is what the final standings look like. Definitely, we have EDG and IG on, this, on the forefront of their conference so far. And then going down the list from the Western Conference, Snake, 
BLG, and then World Elite. So the only unfamiliar names here are probably BLG, former IMEI, and if we go to the east, this is where all the heavy hitters are. We have the trio of IG, Rogue Warriors, and RNG. Finally rounding out the last is Jingdong with their slight advantage over Suning. Like we said, that's the end of group stages here in the LPL. We are going to go to a quick break in just a second, but as we said earlier on, we are going to wrap all the group stages, uh, all the group stage games. We're going to talk about the LPL, we're going to talk about MSI, talk about predictions for playoffs as well. So make sure you stay tuned here. This is the ELCS Finals waiting room, as we said earlier. We've oh, got some fun I'm, stuff to talk about. This is not waiting room. <laughs> Come on, some... I'm not going to put, for e put up for EU. <laughs> we got some fun stuff to talk about later on, Clement. We're going to talk about who you think your MVPs are, who, who we think great rookies were, what the teams look like as well, and also predictions towards the playoffs. Because as we said earlier on, now now BLG, they've got to fight through that extra spot. Yes, they get an extra win because they finished third place and they will get an extra head-to-head -head matchup when they go into their conference, but now they've dropped that crucial buy. Snake will be able to pick that one up and it's looking like a very weighted side of the map with Snake now going up against what could be RNG or WE and then finally IG on that table as well. Yeah, definitely. So the sides are definitely much easier on the top. Jingdong, BLG, Rogue Warriors, and EDG. Jingdong and Rogue Warriors are both non-performing, so BLG actually have a very strong run straight into the finals. But we've got a lot more to talk about playoffs. We're going to go into a very quick break back in about a minute with Frosco and joining us on the desk. Don't go anywhere.